Okay, all, we will get started. Thanks for joining. My name is Lindsay Weaver. I am the IB coordinator and I work very closely with your students throughout their 11th and 12th grade experience. And I are also had the privilege to teach many of them in math, which is 50% of my job. So I'm 50% math teaching and 50% supporting uh, IB students and our IB program. And so uh, for many of you, I see many 11th grade caregivers in the audience. You're starting this IB diploma journey. And for others of you that are have 12th graders, we're kind of in the final sprint to the finish line. So tonight we're gonna focus on, I know that many of you were at IB Info Night in spring of your student's 10th grade year, but I know that that's a lot to remember. So now that they have started their diploma journey, I'm gonna remind us of some details around that and what exactly that journey is. Um, then we will hit on what makes Great River School unique in terms of the supports to get a student through the diploma program. Um, we will hit on some notes about how we're working with students around mental health and wellness in the diploma program. We'll hopefully hear from a few alums who have journeyed on to their university careers and then I will watch our um, chat for questions that come in throughout in case there's anything that we miss. So feel free to enter, send me any questions um, in the chat and I'll watch those as we go. So what exactly is the IB diploma? What are our students doing? We at Great River are one of 20 schools in Minnesota who have chosen to do offer the IB, Rigorous Academic Path versus AP. And the reason is because it's a globally minded program that fits super, super well with the mission at Great River School. And so overall, you see a piece in really both missions. Um, specifically the IB working to develop inquiring, knowledgeable, and caring young people who help to create a better and more peaceful world through intercultural understanding and respect. The IB compared to the AP tends to be seen around the world as a more holistic program focused on the whole person. Uh, again, we're one of only 20 schools in Minnesota offering the IB and Hopefully what you hear from your students is that they're in courses that are inquiry based, they have opportunities to do their own pro projects, they will be in their courses for two years to allow depth of study. Uh, like AP programs, there's pathways to college credit that we'll look at in a few slides. Um, and like every academic program, it still has a lot of work to do to become more anti-racist and uh, offer more diverse perspectives of history and our current world. And here is what your student is actually doing in the IB diploma program. They have a really full academic schedule. They are taking seven IB courses, each of them a rigorous course. They have a minimum of three higher level courses, which we abbreviate to HL, and three standard level courses, which we abbreviate to SL. The only difference in those is it's a, if it's a higher level course, it requires a bit more work throughout their two years. Uh, 11th graders last year wrapped up their extended essays. That's something that this year's 11th graders can look forward to this upcoming spring, which they get to pick any topic research it in depth and write about a 4,000 word essay that ends up getting sent in to IB as part of their diploma journey. Um, like every student at Great River, they engage in creativity, activity, and service. They just have a bit more requirements as a diploma student, including three official interviews with myself or Mari. Um, and their portfolio ends up getting sent in to the IB as part of their diploma. So as you can see, a really, really full academic schedule, which is why there's not a non-IB course in your student's schedule like chemistry, like physics, like ceramics, et cetera. Those are not available to any of our diploma students throughout their two years. 
at the end of their two year journey, and again, some of some seniors in the audience, uh, what happens is we send in all of their official projects that they have done in their classes and they sit um, the May exams for each of their courses, courses, and we send all of that into the IB and the IB gives them a grade in each of their courses. So each of their subjects, the, the student will receive a one through seven from the IB and then theory of knowledge and the extended essay will end up being bonus points depending on how they do on those. And we are looking for a student to get roughly an average of a four in each of their six classes, which would translate to 24 points. So we want the student at the end of their journey to earn 24 points from the IB and have a minimum of 12 higher level points. So for example, um, if the student is in literature, higher level, global politics, higher level, and music higher level, those three courses together need to combine to more than 12 points. Our students do well. If we look at the last five years of diploma candidates, 90% of students earn their diploma after their two years. Um, but as I'll talk about later, it's really the journey that we hear back from alums of saying the journey was worth it, the two years were worth it, they were really hard, but they prepared me well and not necessarily actually whether you get the diploma at the end, as much as we're really proud of that 90% mark. So why stick out this really, really hard program? Uh, research that we've done locally, uh, as we hear back from our alums, the alums that have stuck through the IB diploma program, we, neither Melanie, the former coordinator, or myself, we have yet to hear from a diploma candidate who comes back and says, I wish I wouldn't have stuck it out. They say, yep, in high school, the diploma was really, really hard. There were times where I wanted to give it up, but I'm really glad I stuck it out because it made me feel really confident in my university work. So the rigor of the IB diploma, we hear from alums in our local community that that really uh, impacts their university journey and they're glad they did it with a really strong support network around them. Research also supports this. So we know that uh, the research that's been done on students in the diploma program from a lot of different places globally and nationally is we see better engagement in high school. We see better college access at opening more doors and we see better college readiness as a result of sticking out the IB diploma program. So some things to consider as you have those conversations in the challenging, challenging times of IB diploma rigor. While we know that the IB diploma, the most important thing it does is develop students holistically, we're also very clear about doing some research on how students can get college credit and how the diploma pays off when they go to college. So when you get these slides, uh, you'll have a link to getting IB credit at university, which is on the IBO blog. But I pulled a couple examples that I also shared at IB Info Night. I did highlight this for all folks in this presentation, since your student is a diploma. Uh, there are additional rewards at many colleges across the Midwest and nations but not necessarily every. So it's a good thing to kind of stay in tune with as your student explores where they might go to university. Again, I'm gonna link these slides. If you wanna hear from um, a admissions counselor within one of the top performing US schools, Stanford, of how college admissions uh, programs view the IB diploma program, please feel free to click that link. I think it's about a three minute clip. Oops, we're not gonna open it today though. So I'm just gonna check the chat. That was kind of an overview of what is my student doing again and what exactly is the IB diploma and where is this going? Um, probably one other thing I meant to mention in that is the IB exams at the end of their journey do cost uh, somewhere in, I think the 
$119 range per exam. But I want to emphasize that Great River School always and will continue to work with families to make sure that that's an affordable thing for families, including waiving costs, including 50% payment costs. So I want to emphasize that our priority is making those financially accessible. And we work with seniors every year to make sure that that's the case. So then our program at IB, IB at GRS is really unique because of how much support students get and the way it's modeled. Um, we do not have admissions requirements for your student to get into the diploma program. We are the only school in the state that we know of that intentionally works with students during intervention opportunity, like our built-in indie work on Wednesdays for us to help students get unstuck if they feel stuck on a major IB assessment. Um, and we're constantly checking in with students bi-weekly on where exactly their mental health and wellness is at right now, where they're feeling stuck or overwhelmed, where the group is feeling like, oh my gosh, we have all these deadlines all at once and um, making sure to really get that pulse check so we can make the program feel more supportive to them and meet them where they're at. That's a very unique thing in terms of the state of Minnesota because often it's more IB diploma programs exist in big metro schools and students tend to be lost in the shuffle with graduation classes of 450 or 500. So we're very lucky in the unique setup of Great River, having those indie work blocks where teachers are available for extra support and um, knowing the students really well from 10th through 12th grade. So I promise you that sometime in your student's diploma journey, they're gonna come to you and say, I'm done, I'm dropping the diploma, no more. And uh, I don't know a student who has not hit that kind of brick wall of, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And to me, it, like as a former athlete, it kind of reminds me of running a 400 or watching my friends run marathons of, as you're a spectator, you're cheering and you're like, you can do it. And you know they can do it, but you also can see the physical exertion or toll it's taking. So how do we meet them where they're at when they hit that, I don't know if I can do this. Uh, we do make sure to meet with them one-on-one -on -one and meet as a full team. Uh, and that means you all as caregivers, the students and uh, who they feel supported with by in terms of a GRS adult or a GRS support network. We come around the table with that student and we say, how can we support you? Like, let's talk about some things and let's talk about what makes sense as a path forward. That isn't to say we haven't at the end of that conversation, uh, never sat down and say, you know what, what makes sense is a student going on a different academic path that doesn't, uh, that isn't a diploma path. But that is to say, we're not gonna let the student quit just because they hit that hard moment. So that's how we intervene uh, when inevitably your student will hit that hard moment. Still watching the chat. Um, on that note, I want to make sure I give you some insight on what we've been working with students on around wellness and balance in the diploma. This is actually the first year that we're holding this session for caregivers in the fall. And the reason that the team, which included myself, our school social worker, Seth Tupper, and our director of college access that has a background in counseling, Teresa Hitchens Olson, we talked last spring as we saw a need for wellness intervention and noticed that it would be like really helpful to bring the team together around this proactively in the fall. Uh, and make sure that we're transparent in sharing what we're talking to your students in the diploma program about around these things. So hopefully we can work as a team between home and our support network at school. So 
again, the diploma is not meant to be this rigorous, super academic thing that where it's just like papers and papers and it's really meant to be holistic and around the whole person. But that's challenging. It's challenging to stay balanced and uh, keep our minds on developing all of these 10 aspects of the IB learner profile throughout some really rigorous assignments. And so here's what we have uh, talked to students about and what we will continue to talk to students about this year. Uh, Teresa, our director of college access, really pushes students to be aware of who they're surrounding themselves with throughout a rigorous academic journey and to try to find peers in the diploma program that are able to breathe deeply together and say, okay, let's like practice wellness versus being super competitive with each other, which can just elevate and build off feed each other's stress. It's really hard for us in this generation to take a break from social media and our phones, but really trying to create a ritual where we're grounding ourselves away from technology, including taking a work, a break from work during lunch and evenings, fueling our body, which is something we check in with biweekly uh, around good food and drinking a lot of water and disconnecting. Our social worker, Seth, talked uh, mainly through some adult uh, stories that have happened in his life around the theme of like feeling like all of your, the projects that we do in the diploma have to be perfect when we hand them in, which really alums come back and say, I'm so glad I learned to let go of making something perfect and handing in not my best work throughout my time in the diploma program because that was a necessary skill in university. But that's like way harder said than done. So that's a theme that we continue to come back to as students uh, go through the diploma program. How do we learn to let go of making sure an assignment is our absolute, absolute best work every single time because it's just not sustainable in the diploma program. And Seth has really nudged students to not get stuck, but get inspired. Like if they're starting to notice that they're feeling stuck on an assignment or feeling overwhelmed on a project, communicate often and early with their guides, which is a great IB learner profile trait, learning to be a communicator proactively. Finally, I will note, I think especially post COVID that we're noticing among the diploma candidates, a increase in uh, avoidance, and so Teresa has shared research that says, if we continue to avoid tasks, we spend a lot longer on the tasks. And so again, easier said than done. How do we give students tools to fight avoiding big assignments? And so some things that Seth and Teresa have shared include um, in that, I've heard diploma students report back has worked for them is saying, you know what, this paper that I'm doing for global politics that I haven't started, it feels really overwhelming. And like in my mind, it's gonna take thousands of hours. And I feel really overwhelmed by that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a timer for 30 minutes and I'm gonna tell myself, I'm going to work on this global politics paper for 30 minutes. And after those 30 minutes, I'm gonna take a break. But during those 30 minutes, I'm really writing, like I'm giving myself those 30 minutes and they pleasantly surprise themselves with how far they get in 30 minutes or insert X amount of time, 45 minutes an hour. Uh, some other strategies shared, including included starting the tasks on paper, like brainstorming on paper, which provides a little more flexibility. Uh, the senior shared about, a, shared a, plant app where the longer you didn't touch your phone the more a plant grew and that sounded like a fun one and they were enjoying that and then um if they're feeling overwhelmed by a task just taking a transition time okay i'm gonna go have a snack in the kitchen and then i'm gonna sit down in my flow space and i'm gonna start my math assignment that's feeling overwhelming 
finally, I think a really important one and hopefully something you can encourage at home is with those big diploma assignments, just asking how can we celebrate you and how can you celebrate at the end of this? Like what would feel really good or something to look forward to while you're doing this task, whether it's going to the park with friends on Saturday or seeing a concert or uh, having cake, uh, whatever brings them joy so they have something to look forward to after a really challenging task. Our new social emotional learning uh, facilitator that's now grades one through 12, she used to be um, only in the elementary, Salaha. Uh, I had a conversation with her on the phone yesterday on her insights to share with you all. And one thing that stood out was just reminding all of us that work with teenagers, especially at Great River in a Montessori, that it's okay to uh, in the midst of letting them go, they've all been like such great academic performers and very independent. They're, this is going to be hard. Boundaries are helpful, especially around screen time, especially when they're centered in your teenager's health and wellness. So that was something that she pushed and reminded me of. Um, and then she also pushed us to just share with you some of the check-in questions that have worked for us to spark good conversations around this. So these are some questions that we use with students who we're working with either in advisory or intervention. Um, where are you feeling stuck? Is there anything I can do to help you feel unstuck? Are there any guides or adults that might be really helpful to check in with one-on-one? -on -one? because we're a team and we're here to support your diploma journey and we don't want you to ever feel stuck or overwhelmed on an assignment. And then what might we do here to celebrate you or what might feel really good to do after submitting X, Y, or Z? I have been surprised at how often a student will say, yeah, can you take away my phone for a little bit so I can like really focus on this or like other surprising things that I wasn't expecting. Um, but I would absolutely encourage all of you if you're noticing any changes or dips or you have any concerns around your students health, uh, self care and the habits that you're noticing or if you're noticing some avoidance on bigger assignments and things seem to be piling up or the stress level seems to be peaking because of not finishing certain tasks, please, please reach out to me because then we can create a team around and create a community intervention um, versus because again, like we're all in this to support your IB diploma student to the finish line. So we absolutely wanna be team members in this. Looking at a few chats that came in, uh, one person asked, are there traditional syllabi for the classes? Um, the IB does set the topics that are covered. So a student theoretically, could study a year of global politics at Great River School, and they, they could move across the world to the Czech Republic and go to an IB school in the Czech Republic and do their second year of global politics. So students around the world are really studying the same topic if they're in the same IB course. The second question, are completion criteria for learning objectives clearly stated up front? with clear, overtly understood outcomes for students. Um, I'll answer that from the IB perspective, which I'm guessing is what this means. Uh, there are, so for official IB projects, such as, for instance, the math internal assessment, where a student goes off and picks their own topic and does their own research and creates a paper about it. There is a rubric that you can actually Google right now. Math IA rubric for IB math applications. That is a global rubric that gives the descriptors of each area that's assessed. So those rubrics are widely available for every single IB class that your student is in. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to check. We have a few alum that are willing to share some insight with us. So I'm just gonna take a moment to stop sharing and make sure that I get them promoted just so we can hear a little bit from beyond the world of IB. So I'm gonna ask Alma some questions here. Alma, I'm promoting you to panelists. And Alma, let me know if you can speak or if uh, I need to change anything on your end. I can speak, yes. Sweet. Uh, Alma, where are you coming from right now? Where are you joining our webinar from? Uh, not very far. I'm in Northfield at St. Olaf College. Great. And Alma graduated from the diploma program in 2021. Is that right, Alma? Yeah, it is. Okay. And Alma, um, my first question question for you is when in your journey if any part of the journey did you want to quit and tell us about what felt helpful to push through and are you glad that you pushed through yeah so I actually got very close to dropping the diploma um towards the end of my senior year I think um and I think it was really difficult for me completing the diploma completely over Zoom because I did my entire senior year um, virtual from my house um, because we were not, we didn't have in-person school. And so I got very close to dropping the diploma. Um, it felt very overwhelming to me, but I, I think I ended up meeting with a couple guides and discussing what I would need to do in, in order to drop the diploma. And they were all like, no, 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 we'll like, don't drop it here are the things we can do for you in order to keep you in the, in the diploma. So I, I think I worked with Patricia in Spanish and she helped me complete some assignments that I hadn't done and everybody was very supportive and I stuck with the diploma and I'm very glad I did, um, but I did get very close to dropping it. Can you talk about how you notice it paying off in surprising ways or ways that you expected? Um, I think unsurprising ways are paper writing. I definitely wrote a lot of papers in the diploma and I am definitely writing a lot of papers now in college. Um, and I think the diploma really helped me develop uh, a, like techniques that work for me. So, you know, through trial and error, um, I learned how I like to write a paper, especially starting the paper sooner rather than later. And I know everybody says that I think you were talking about that as well but when I let it sit and I think about it 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 grows into this like big scary monster um and I feel like I can never start it but if I just sit down and I look at it and I do some research right off the bat uh, I think that really helps me feel like I'm capable of completing it and also working on it in small chunks um if I write the paper and I leave it for a day and I come back I feel like I can look at it I can separate myself from it a little bit I I, I see it not as the writer as much um and you're your own your worst critic so you're always going to look at your own work and be like this is terrible is there anything that felt helpful either from adults at grs or adults at your house and or like what would what advice might you give to someone wanting to support someone's ib diploma journey yeah um well you mentioned students giving you their phones and separating myself from my phone was very helpful and again i did a lot of my diploma work from my house because we were not in person um and so i was spending so much time in my bedroom doing classes and doing homework that finding a like going somewhere else really helped me so even if it was just moving downstairs to the dining room table that change in environment um I, I kind of was kind of refreshing and I felt like I could get work done in a way I couldn't when I was, you know, still in the same space I'd been in all day and being around my family. Like, even if my parents were cooking in the kitchen, I think it helped me feel more accountable. Just knowing that there was kind of an audience seeing me not getting my work done made me feel like I should be getting it done. Um, and I, I do that here at school too, as well. I think working in public spaces, I get things done better. And also, 
Yep, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say, like, my parents were very supportive and helpful. And if I needed my dad to, like, look through my paper because I felt like it was horrible, he would do that. So it was just nice, like, having their support. Yes, there are many adults, caregivers, myself included, that love kind of reading through diploma projects and papers. I hope um, he loved it because he definitely had to do it. <laughs> I definitely continue to do it. I Something that you said reminded me of conversations that we continue to have with intervention students or students in general of just like asking the question, when you're not at Great River, where do you work best and where do you feel like you have the most potential for getting into flow? And for mm -hmm. some students like you, it's working at the kitchen table next to an adult, even if that adult's not helping them, but they're just there. And for other students, they something's revealed that indicates that they don't have a place. Like they feel like everything's so loud and there's a lot of things going on and that can lead to a really quality conversation too. So I'm glad that you mentioned that and that you discovered because now you're using that skill at university. Is there yeah. anything I should have asked Alma that I didn't ask as we work with caregivers of mostly 11th grade IB diploma students who are just starting this journey? Um, I don't think so, but I do wanna mention going to guides for support. Um, I think recognizing when you need help is very important and reaching out can be really difficult. Um, and I think I felt, I felt a lot of the time that I should be able to do these assignments on my own. But when I went to a guide and actually worked through it, it felt so much more doable. And so taking that step and going and talking to someone if you're having trouble is very helpful. I think that's especially true with diploma students because it's often the case that diploma students have been able to be successful really independently uh, at least in their recent schooling and like haven't necessarily needed to rely on asking for help. Mm -hmm. And that is such a crucial skill that is absolutely needed in the diploma journey is meeting with guides during indie work, asking for my help or whatever to get unstuck on big assignments because it's a lot, like seven basically college level classes as a 16 year old it is a different beast than 10th grade and so it really is definitely a lesson worth learning early and uh utilizing early thanks yes. alma for taking time out of your busy life to come chat ib diploma with us we yeah, wish thank you the you best of luck as an oli um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. thank you <laughs> talk to you soon Okay, everyone, with Alma having concluded some uh, offering insight from the university world, I have no other content. So I am happy to stick around and answer questions, but I don't see any current questions in the chat or the Q&A. So I will look forward to sharing our slides with you right after we hang up and sending the recorded presentation when it's available. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone. And hello, did you have a question? Oh, yep, Q&A is also fine. <laughs> Good to know, noted for next time. Thanks, Anne.